Hi, in this video, I will do a comparison of a decision tree algorithm with the linear regression algorithm. Both these algorithms are supervised learning algorithm. You can use them to predict target variable given a set of explanatory variable and uh, both are going to do a good job. But how do we decide uh, what, uh, which, of, which one of these algorithms is to be used for a particular problem? So we'll just learn, we'll just discuss what, uh, what are the different features that you know, separates them and how do we decide uh, what to use when. So let's uh, understand the theory uh, briefly and we can do a comparison uh, in a better way there. In uh, linear regression, the, the functional form is very clear. You know, there is a given, uh, given a set of explanatory variable x, you are predicting the target variable y. Okay, and you can write it in a linear uh, equation, right? Linear equation is nothing but, you know, it could be something like this. So this is a linear equation. Given x, it's very clear what is y. Okay, so that is the way you, uh, you know, you do a linear regression wherein you have an intercept, you have an intercept, and then you have a uh, slope coefficient. Right. So given a intercept and slope, you can always predict the value of y given a set of independent variables. That's not the case in decision tree. In decision tree, you go by partitioning your data uh, to uh, different, uh, you know, smaller segments and then uh, take an average of uh, the target variable in a given segment. Okay. So there are several segments we have, you know, noted at uh, the segments R1, R2, you know, there could be m number of segments and in each segment we just assume that there is an uniformity and you just take the average of the target variable to predict. Uh, so, so what are the x variables used for? Well, the x variables are used for partitioning your data. Okay, so that's the idea. So, there's a fundamental difference between the theory. So this is more parametric in technical terms. We call this is you know more parametric in nature. That means uh, we have the parameters, you know, the intercept and the slope coefficient. These are parameters, right? Uh, unlike uh, in linear regression, which is uh, which which gives us parameters, we normally don't have um, parameters in decision tree. Although loosely we can say the number of you know segments or number of Terminal nodes could be considered as, uh, considered as some sort of a parameter, but yeah, theoretically it is not the case. So given that we have some sort of an understanding of the theory or the difference in the theory of decision tree and linear regression, let's understand uh, which one is better and what is, well, there is no answer to this. I mean, both perform uh, very good, uh, but there are situations where decision tree performs better and there are situations where uh, linear regression performs better. So if you are sure about the relationship between your target variable and explanatory variable, you are very sure that there is a linearity uh, in your data. So you, you can clearly say there is linearity, right? So you can fit a, a, a regression line, a linear regression line. In that particular scenario, you should go uh, for linear regression. But many a times the uh, relationship between the target variable and the explanatory variables are not very clear. Sometimes there is a very bad or there is very, you know, a complex relationship that exists between the data that you cannot, uh, you know, you cannot simply visualize and, um, you know, understand that it is linear in nature. In those scenarios, it is always good to go with decision tree. You know, you can have situations where, you know, the data is something like this. Um, okay. So in such a scenario, you cannot, if you, if it a linear regression line, it's going to do a bad job. You know, that is highly non-linear in nature. So linear regression won't do a good job. There are different forms of linear regression which will, you know, be able to handle it. But instead, you can go in for a decision tree. So if there exists a non-linear relationship in your data and it is more complex to handle in linear uh, regression, it's better go to uh, go with uh, decision tree. However, 
the best uh, or perhaps a, a more practical way to uh, decide is to do a cross validation it's it's not a thumb rule that uh, you have to just you know use one of them you, know, you can actually use both these algorithms and uh, decide which one to use finally you, know? you can compare the output or results from these algorithms just by doing a cross validation with your test data and see which one is performing better the one that is performing better is to be considered for the final uh, considered as the final algorithm okay but um, the th going through a proper theoretical route is always recommendable because cross validation is always more of an applied thing which you can always confirm at the end of the analysis not at the beginning of the analysis in the beginning you should actually uh, understand the problem at hand and see which one is uh, going to work better all right there are other differences between uh, decision tree and linear regression um, decision tree is very easy to interpret it's very easy to interpret you have a tree like this okay you can uh, explain to non-technical audience very well that look this is my uh, tree and this is the way the data is classified into okay and a decision tree can well be used for classification and regression even for regression you can explain it uh, in a very well manner okay so uh, in interpreting your result is very easy even for non-technical audience and it, it is going to help you a lot when you present your work as a data scientist to uh, somebody who doesn't come from statistical analysis background so it is, uh, you know, if your interpretability is the question, is something that uh, it matters to you, then it's good to go with decision tree. However, there are instances when uh, interpretability is not of that important. Uh, you would rather uh, have a result that is more robust in nature and something that uh, takes into account, um, you know, other uh, aspects of data analysis, not just predicting the target variables. One other aspect of data analysis is finding the causal aspect, causal uh, effect. Okay, so what do you mean by causal effect? If you have x and then we have we have x and y, and we're trying to find a relationship, not only we want to know how x is able to predict y, we're also interested to know how x affects y. So if I change x by one unit, how much that uh, affect the value of y or technically speaking we also want to know the change of the value of y with respect to change of x okay technically we call this as marginal marginal effect okay so that is also of interest to uh, data analysts okay so uh, i'll take an example to show you so here is an example of a regression uh, analysis wherein i have tried to uh, predict the salary of someone given the number of years of education so salary uh, is y which is uh, being modeled as uh, the number of year of education okay so this is the linear regression now we have the result in place now it shows that um, so the x variable one which is your education takes a value of 21 that means if the number of um, uh, the if you increase the number of year of education of somebody or for an um, employee let's for um, instance um, increases by one unit you know then the corresponding change in the salary of the same employee will be 20 uh, 0.9 units it could be dollar you know pound or rupees depending on the currency of data that you are taking in your data set okay so this particular analysis cannot be done using decision tree you can only do it using linear regression okay so if your motivation is not just predicting your value you also want to see the relationship between um you know uh, the explanatory or independent variable with the target variable uh, both are important to you if that is the case you should go ahead with linear regression okay so that's special case of uh, 
of data analysis where linear regression uh, is always preferred. Now here is a comparison of the advantages and disadvantages of using decision tree. Decision trees are uh, easy to explain. I have already said this, and they are more intuitive in nature, which means that uh, human being, we as human being, uh, think pretty much like decision tree, right? Whenever we make a decision, we always uh, segment the data. We go, you know, mm, you know, we go by segmenting. Uh, the entire problem into smaller parts and choosing one from the smaller part and that's more intuitive for human beings so that's why it is good and it can uh, be used by non-technical people people who do not come from data analysis background um, and one of the good thing about uh, decision tree from a data scientist point of view is that you don't have to convert all the uh, qualitative variables or uh, categorical variables into dummy ones before using them uh, in the model. Okay, that's easy because you know it automatically takes into consideration while partitioning. So that's uh, something you don't have to worry. Uh, the disadvantages of using decision tree is that the predictive uh, power or the ability to predict your target variable is less. So that's one disadvantage. Linear regression does a better job. Uh, and second thing is that um, it's highly sensitive to outliers. If your data has so many outliers, then the prediction is is bad. Okay, so that you can handle uh, better in linear regression. It's not that sensitive. So uh, these are some of the you know good things and bad things about decision tree. If you uh, there are different variations of decision tree. You know there are uh, concepts like bagging. Uh, boosting and then uh, random forest. So these are uh, different versions of decision tree which combines various decision tree to sort of predict uh, the target variable. Uh, they do a better job. So the, uh, so the first disadvantage will go away when you use uh, you know decision tree um, which are uh, more powerful in nature. Okay. And um, outliers are always going to be problem for any model. Okay, uh, if you can handle outlier uh, while doing the exploratory data analysis, while doing the preliminary analysis before building the model, it is always uh, good for you. Okay, thank you so much.